Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's been an entire year since I've been on YouTube and I thought to celebrate it'd be good to take a quick look back at the top 10 beers I reviewed on this channel. Now that's not to say they were the 10 best beers I had all year, not at all because I had a few absolute gems while I was out and about without a camera, but these were definitely some of the top contenders. So let's roll it. Here are my top 10 review beers. Cheers. This is Brew York's A Nightmare of Brew York, which is kind of a play on the Nightmare Before Christmas, fairy tale of New York thing. Basically, this is an imperial version with a slightly different flavour profile. So this comes in at a whopping 9.8% and is described as a peanut, pecan, maple and vanilla imperial milk style. I mean, if I don't like this, they can do no right, to be honest, because this sounds absolutely right up my street. I did just get a big old whiff of it as it um, came past me there as I swapped hands and put the can down. It's, um, yeah, it's uh, it's got a sweet nutty aroma, I think it's fair to say. It smells like, smells like it's going to be quite strong and um, I mean the appearance on this, the head is gone already. I mean it's a 10% so not much surprise there. Colour wise, that is pitch. It's just, it's just blackness. It really is. There's not really anything shining through there. Aromas. Oh, that smells like it could be absolutely divine. Caramel nuts, you know those, you know those kind of caramel, what they're called? You know, like the sweet toffee nuts you get at Christmas. It smells like maple syrup covered pecans as well. It's that, oh, it just, yeah, it's that. Oh, this is gonna be, yes, 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 yes. I've got, I've got strong hopes for this. Let's do this. Cheers. That is, divine that is absolutely incredible wow that's got oh, i mean it tastes like pecan pie it's got it's so thick so syrupy so looks it's super warming the booze isn't too obvious and i mean this is a, this could be the winter warmers of all winter warmers to be honest because that's like a great big boozy hug, that beer. That is absolutely incredible. It's not delicate flavours. It's strong, it's robust, it's bold, but it's not quite too much. It's getting close. It's really like amping up, but just not to the point where it's overkill. Everything's there. Everything's balanced. And, oh, that butterscotchy. It's got, yeah, like the beer yesterday, it's got a butterscotch vibe, vanilla-iness to it, but it's sweet. It's a maple syrup. Just sticks to your mouth. I can, as I'm talking, the flavour's almost getting better. It's got, yeah, it's like maple syrup pancakes. It's like, oh, I mean, it is just fantastic. Top to bottom taste test. Let's do this. So, initially, lightly sweet, lightly carbonated on the front of the tongue. Second phase, you already know you've got something magical because that kind of, between the front of the tongue and the taste buds at the back, most beers really taste of not a lot. Sometimes a bit of bitterness, but it's already starting to gain sweetness, a bit of caramel kind of, I don't know, hints of, if you like, hints of caramel on that phase. And then as it gets to the back, you get that real deep, pecan, nutty vibe. The aftertaste is so overwhelming and so intense that it's actually quite hard to pick out key notes from the other points in the process, if you like, because on the explosion, that's where it goes butterscotchy. When you swallow it, you get a splash, you get that rich butterscotch vanilla fudgy almost it's like it's super sweet super that's the point it gets really intense um not over again not overly but it's quite intense and you think oh if that carries on that could be a bit too much but then after you swallow it it builds it builds it builds washes away and leaves you in the sensation of you just eating a super sweet sticky maple pecan pie with a big old dollop of vanilla clotted cream like oh it's just it's really good. It's really, really good. Yeah, this is a brand new beer. It's called Ban One from Lord's Brewing Co. It only felt right to wear my new merch tee that I got from them earlier today in the same box that this came in called Ban One. Um, I know it's inspired by Smokey and the Bandit. That was the license plate of the key car in that film and it's an American Pale Ale. And the Ban One plate on the back there as well. Oh, 
Right. How does she sniff? Ooh, fruity. Proper American pale ale, but maybe it's going to be a bit sweeter. I'm hoping, well, I'll say I'm hoping. I think it's going to be a little bit less bitter, a bit more forgiving. It smells like it's going to be a very well-rounded American pale ale. It's got that quintessential classic bag of kind of sweet lemon, bitter grapefruit, maybe a bit of pineapple in there. Hop aroma comes through quite thick and fast. It's definitely a bit piney. Right. Let's get into this. Cheers. Well, I sure am glad I bought 12. That has got a lot going on. Nice, thick, creamy head. Moves around the glass very nicely. It looks like a really well poured pint, that. And it's just come out of a can. Um, I mean, this is pretty fresh as this is brand new. That might be why. Um, so let's try and pick out some tasting notes. Initially, the tiniest bit bitter across the front of the tongue, but you don't really notice it. That goes into kind of lemon grapefruit explosion with some associated bitterness. That's where the bitterness really comes in, right in the middle, across the middle of the tongue. Then it gets cleaned out. More citrus flavours, but kind of the sweeter, sweet lemon, pineapple. I don't think there's any mango in there. I think it's more those kind of more citric heavy fruits. And there is some malt profile left at the back, which is something you don't get in a lot of these types of beer. Um, it's not huge. It's not biscuity or anything like that. There's just a distinct bit of grain kind of on the, on the finish that's a nice change. So it's 6%. So it's, it's potent, but not silly. Also getting a bit of the creaminess of the wheat. It is quite a hazy beer. The nose is becoming reminiscent of, of kind of wheat heavy beers, but just with obviously a very different kind of fruit profile. That is a cracking beer. And as I said, it's not a beer style I would normally drink on my own. So buying 12 was a bit of a risk, uh, but it has indeed paid off. This is a caucus. Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to Small Fire. This is from Alter Ego Brewing from Hena in Derbyshire, pretty close to where uh, I live at home, not that close to here, of course. Um, it's called Small Fire, a Campfire Marshmallow Stout. I mean, I've had this uh, on my kind of beer shelf for quite a while now, and I mean, it's had to be done, didn't it? Ooh, a little lively. I can immediately smell it, even outside. It's got some nice, sweet, slightly cinder toffee kind of notes coming on. Let's find out what the aromas are like. It's got that de facto milk stout thing going on. It's really, really cutting through. It's got a toastiness to it. It's not, um, say, a clean stout. It's got some like super... It's kind of like that burnt coffee note you get in a lot of stouts, but the coffee pot's not really coming through. It's just that serious roastiness. You could argue for a touch of vanilla, but it's not strong on the nose, that's for sure. Cheers. Oh, that is incredible. That is properly good. Um, it's sweet. The vanilla comes through more on the flavour. It's kind of like a milk bottle sweet kind of a vibe. I think I've said that a bit about another beer this weekend, actually. But this one, more so, this is properly that kind of sweet milk bottle sweet kind of thing. Some roastiness in the back end, like for the aroma like those heavy roast coffee stouts but you don't get the coffee element it's just just roast just fire roast i mean i know why they called it what they did because that is yeah that is absolutely cracking initially it's bitter and sweet fighting each other on the front of the tongue then you get that nice milky lactose mouthfeel and then you get the flavor explosion you get that vanilla milk bottle bit but with a bit of a smoky back end that roasty that roastiness and then the vanilla goes and you're left with that roastiness with a bit of the, the, the sweet the sweet stuff transcending through um, but no massive particular flavours either. And then on the finish, it's really clean actually for a stout, for a flavoured stout there's not, um, there's not a huge deal of flavour uh, left you know, on, on the palate afterwards. Now it's been open for a bit, I think everything's remained pretty much true but they've all amped up a little bit. The bitterness is a bit more, the smokiness is a bit more and the sweetness all seems to be a bit more. That is a truly, truly brilliant beer. Go get one if you can. I say if they're still making it, definitely worth a shout.
to it. It's called Wonderland and it is a nectarine ale. I'm not sure what kind of ale, whether it's going to be pale, dark or something else entirely, but for some reason out of everything they had on offer uh, when I bought this pack, this was the one that stood out as just the most appealing to me personally. I don't know why because there's actually not a lot of info out there about it other than it is nectarine based. Now what I'm hoping this is is a beer that has a bit of nectarine hints and a bit of sweetness rather than just a, a juicy thing but we'll see. Quite a lot of carbonation. Not quite what I was expecting. It's very, it's got pretty good clarity. It's only a touch hazy. All right. Let's get some aromas. Oh, it does smell good though. It's uh, nectarine forward, as you would imagine. Super sweet orange. You could argue for some peach, but I mean, peach and nectarine, when we're talking about infused in something like this, they're not a million miles apart. Got a little bit of a grassy note right at the back, but it's super subtle. I mean, visually, it looks like it's going to be quite thin. However, the head now has subsided and it's left with quite a closed bubble, thin head, but I don't know, something about it makes me think this is going to be pretty silky smooth, so let's get into it. Cheers. Wow, I was not wrong. I had an, just an inkling about this beer that I was going to love it, and I think I was right. So, obviously, it's full of nectarine flavour. Um, it's got nice carbonation, it's super refreshing, it has got a silky finish, as I suspected, and it's also got a nice big bit of malt biscuitiness right at the back, which really, for me, is just... I mean, an idyllic pale ale taste profile. There's the absolute tiniest bit of citrus bitterness across the front of the tongue. It's almost non-existent. And then all you really get is mouthfeel. It's both heavily carbonated and silky smooth, which aren't all that common a kind of duo. So it's just a really nice experience in that middle phase. You just get very much the impression that it is still genuinely beer. There's a bit of the hops coming through but it's super dialed down. It's like just reminiscent of beer and, uh, and just a big splash of that nectarine flavor. And then after that, it was a little bit bitter, only tiny though, quite drying, not super, just, just a touch. And then you're left with a nice biscuity malt taste, which with that lingering nectarine just brings a bit of kind of a fruit cheesecake vibe with it. So that's just, that's really spot on. That biscuity finish is wonderful, it really is. That, as I suspected, is an absolutely cracking beer. Chocolate Porter at 6.8%. Now, this beer style is right on my street. If they don't nail this one, I'm gonna feel really bad because I have to be honest about it, but I mean, this stands up pretty damn good chance of me being pretty impressed. Completely pitch black beer as you would expect. It's a porter not a stout so we might get... There's the tiniest bit of red bleeding through the bottom but there are red lights on behind me so I think some of those are reflections but I think just down here, I don't know if it will pick it up on screen but there's the tiniest bit of light bleeding through right at the bottom of the glass. Uh, kind of coffee, off-white, kind of creamer coloured, one finger head that I think is going to deplete pretty rapidly. So let's see what the aromas are saying. Oh, that smells superb. Getting dark roast malts, heaps of kind of dark chocolate, cacao nib, roasted coffee. So that smells a bit like a nitroed up mocha, that kind of vibe. Yeah, creamy. I feel like this might be a lactose beer. It's got, definitely got that kind of creamy, white, rich coffee thing rather than just a straight up espresso kind of style. A little bit of a licorice thing going on too. You know, the kind of the default rich, deep porter kind of vibe. So let's get this all in. I mean, would you just look at that? Really? does look appealing, doesn't it? Right, cheers. Oh yes. Oh, oh, oh yes. That, that is proper. Mm. Joe Paul put me off Thornbridge Brewery for so many years and I was a fool to do so because that is an absolutely exceptional dram. 
It's fantastic. It's got all of the notes that were on the nose transfer into the taste. You're not missing out. But let's do a quick kind of top to bottom. This has got to have lactose in it because initially, super silky, smooth, sweet, milky, right on the front of the tongue. And then it's straight into big, rich chocolatiness through that kind of second phase. And then it's roast malts, coffee, slap of bitterness to go with that kind of deep roasted malt. Springs off the back, more chocolate notes, a bit lighter this time, a bit of the um, carbonation from the beer spikes around the tongue. And that you get a bit of the tinge of licorice, I think, then as well. Just that kind of deep molasses, generic flavour. And then on the swallow, it goes back, it's lactosey, creamy. I can tell by the way my saliva is reacting that this is this is, has to have lactose in it. I'm absolutely certain. And it leaves you with a nice, sweet, lingering mocha coffee and chocolate aftertaste that's just appealing to bring you some more. I'm going to smash that in no time at all. And at 6.8%, this is properly dangerous. That is absolutely fantastic. Probably the most flavorful lager you've ever had. Um, we'll do a full taste test, obviously, but this is Snow Goose Lager from Glen Spreen Brewing Co. in Scotland, just outside of Fort William. Um, and to be honest, everything I've had from them so far has been pretty damn good. <laughs> Now, I do have a Glen Spean Brewing Co. glass, but I, uh, I left it in Scotland. I've not got quite all of the bottle in, but look at that for a pint. I mean, just look at it. That is a thing of beauty. It's golden. It's touch on the medium to darker side for lagers, I would say. Um, it's certainly not properly pale. Um, yeah, nice goldenness. I mean, the foam on that, I mean, you can see it if I wobble it around. Look at, the, look at that. I mean, it's got real substance to it. And tons and tons of carbonation in that glass. So the aromas, you immediately know from the aroma that this beer is a bit different. It doesn't really smell all that much like a traditional lager. There's a sweetness, there's a smokiness, which we'll come back to. And there's something else, something rich, something, I can't quite put my finger on it. And to be honest, I've tried a few times as I've drank this, there is a scent, an odor, and a flavor to this that I'm just really not sure what it is, but it's very different and it's not something I've ever had in beer before, which can be a bit of a step back moment when you try it for the first time. But um, as you can see, I'm probably giving away that I do like this because I'm quite excited by it. Um, and I didn't buy a case of 12, by the way, because I liked it because I'd never tried it at that point. It was, I, just, I had a good feeling. Let's just say that. Um, right, any of anything else? It's a creaminess. There's a a nuggetiness almost to it. It's really quite strange. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. Cheers. Oh yeah. A week or so away from this has not changed anything. That is still. It's it's bizarre. It is absolutely bizarre. Um, tons of flavour. It's so flavourful. If you want a lager that just wafts down, you don't have to think about, this might not be it. Because it makes you. It makes you. It does drink easily, but it's like a burnt cinder toffee caramel thing there. That just, I don't know, it's so counter to what you would expect this style of beer to be. It's a little bit of a mind boggle. It's got a peatiness, a smokiness, a bit of a scotch whiskey thing about it. It's not properly there, but there's just a nod of the hat to, well, that Scottish brilliance. I can't do it any more justice just taking a sip and trying to take it all in. So, top to bottom taste test. Initially, fractionally sweet, fairly heavily carbonated on the front of the tongue. Then you get what is quite a traditional lager element that Mild bitterness, very refreshing quality, kind of straight across the middle. There's no hint at that point. It's really big on flavour. Um, the mouth feels good. Uh, it's, I mean, it's a lager. It's not thick by any means, but it, you know, you get that ever so slight velvetiness that you do get with some more premium quality beers of this style. Uh, and then, weirdly, although you've not swallowed it, the back of the tongue down the sides. 
and you start to get a bit of a tingle. Just don't excited, it's not sour, it's a little bit of bitterness, but really it's tingling because well, that sensation shouldn't really be there. It's more of the sweetness comes in and a little bit of that smokiness right at the back there. And then you get the proper finish and it is huge. It's well, all those things we talked about before, and there's so many of them, I'm really struggling to dial in very individual notes. Right, it's smoky, it's peaty, it's got that scotch thing, the toffees in there, caramel, there's a bit of biscuit almost, maybe a bit of burnt biscuit. It's that kind of, mmm, super toasty, lovely. Hints to lots of different things, there's some vanilla in there, marshmallow hit maybe. Um, it's just, oh, there's so much going on. For a lager, it's absolutely mind blowing. Blue Monkey's Chocolate Gorilla, uh, which is a beer I've had quite a few times before, so nice to try it in a new format. And look at that. That is the first pour. It doesn't look exceptional, I think you'll agree. Um, this is quite a flat beer though, to be honest, so cheers. Despite the lack of head on it, it has got a real creaminess to the body. Now, I would like a better head on it, let's be honest. But, other than that, I can't really complain. If we top it up, what happens? Now, it's dissipating pretty quickly, but adding a bit of ferocity to it certainly has changed it up. Does that taste any different? Wow, the chocolate notes in that really sticking out. I think a lot more than they do when you use the normal keg by themselves. And um, hey, it's not the most visually appealing test, I guess, this beer. Most of you won't have had this, so it's hard to kind of navigate excusing this in the way it looks but well, I don't know I think there is definitely something to this visually as dark as you like really it's a proper properly dark stout on the aroma it's chocolate dark chocolate cacao nib vanilla earthiness roastiness and just a hint a hint of sweetness right at the back again cheers that is fantastic that is fantastic. I don't know whether this particular version of this beer is that much better than the others. I don't think it is from memory. In fact, if anything, I, from memory, I feel like I prefer the plum, but it's just exceptional compared to the one I had the other day. Don't get me wrong. The one I had the other day was good, but yeah. I mean, I've had this keg sat effectively open without any gas properly going into it for a couple of hours, which would probably impact the quality of it, the life of it, and that sort of thing. So I'm not seeing this as a true, true test of the machine. Once I get to grips with it, we'll test a few more different kegs and see how we get on. But in terms of the mouthfeel and the flavor that I'm getting out of it, I couldn't really ask for much more. This was canned four, three, four days ago, um, and I've already got one, which is pretty exciting in and of itself, properly brand new. It's out today, if you're watching this on video release date, or it was out, yeah, you get the idea. Um, and it's called Utini, a sticky toffee pudding and custard pale ale. It's part of the Seven Series from Seven Brothers. The Seven Series is a series of seven beers that the Seven Brothers are doing uh, to mark their seventh birthday, and each beer is gonna be 7%, so, it's 7%. Standard crummy pour, of course. Ooh, I just got wafts of pudding. Visually, heavily carbonated. A lot of head, but that's more my fault than the beers, I'm sure. Um, a lot of carbonation swelling up the glass there, as you can as you can see. It's got good clarity, though, I must say. There's no, there's no big haze to this. Right, how does it sniff? Oh, I mean, just treacle. It's just treacle, toffee, it's just sweet butter, butterscotch actually is where it's really at. Butterscotch is, is the one. 
there's a bit of fruit in there. It's a bit of pecan maple, that kind of that kind of thing. Overwhelmingly butterscotch. Obviously, it's very malty as a result of that on the nose. But it's that real sweet caramel, almost chocolate malt, but it's not really got that cocoa element. It's just that. Yeah, again, it's it's mainly it's mainly butterscotch toffee. Let's be honest. No real hot presence on the nose, unsurprisingly. That is all I'm getting from it, but I say all, it smells amazing. <laughs> it smells just absolutely incredible. Right, let's get into it. Cheers. That is divine. It's sweet, it's very sweet, but that has got absolute balance to it. I can't tell that 7%. That's dangerous. In the best possible way. Um, I'm a bit overwhelmed by this. It's oh, There's so much flavour in there. And now it's starting to settle down a bit. I'm getting a bit of, just a little bit of hop. Somewhere between, it's not just on the nose and it's not really in the taste, but kind of when you're enjoying that actual drinking sensation where kind of all sensors are on board. I mean, this is 7% the chance of me drinking this slowly <laughs> is looking slim. So, top to bottom taste test. Initial carbonation. Not sweet or sour, just good mouthfeel. By the way, the mouthfeel is just, it's so, like, it's exactly where it should be. It's not too thick because it is a pale, but it's silky smooth. Think, think lighter Belgian style and the sweetness just goes with that. It's just a running sweetness initially. Um, and then the flavor kicks in, which is just an absolute huge surge of sticky toffee pudding. Following on from that, you start to get a bit of vanilla on the back end, that custard bit, and then the finish just leaves you with an aftertaste of pudding of that whole meal. I mean, it's so, so on the nose for what it's meant to be. That's truly incredible, and I'm sad that I'm halfway down it already. I have nothing more to say about this, but this is one of the best videos I've tried this year. <laughs> pies. I push my fingers into my pies. A uh, Black Irish Brewery, who are a Nottingham Brace Brewery, so super local to me, have produced this. It is a Cherry Bakewell Imperial Stout at 10.5% called I Push My Fingers Into My Pies, which is a play on words, uh, placing eyes with pies from the uh, popular Slipknot song, Duality, I believe it is. Uh, and yeah, so uh, incredible artwork on here. Let's get it open. A very full can, has to be said. Oh, wow. Would you look at that. Now then, uh, I think on camera it's coming across ever so slightly darker hue on the head. It's more kind of toffee, caramel esque although it might just be my monitor to be fair. Um, but yeah, one and a bit finger, um, kind of caramel toffee coloured head. A beer as dark as you like really. I mean, I can get no nothing, nothing at all bleeding through there. Um, that looks properly, properly dark. As this is 10.5%, that head's really not hanging around. It's already halved in size and we're only kind of a minute or so after pouring. So I suspect that'll disappear super quickly. Um, right then, aroma time. It smells really chocolatey, really chocolatey. Touch of coffee, bit of dark stone fruit in there. Maybe a bit of vanilla. I'm going off the chocolate idea, actually. I think this is... Yeah, let's swill it around. Let's open it up. Much more fruity, more vanilla. And there's a bit of, there's a bit of kind of marzipan, that kind of thing, which, I mean, I'm not a big fan of, to be honest, but one thing I have learned recently is that just because I'm not a fan of something doesn't mean I'm not a fan of it when it's made into beer. Now, this is meant to be, as I said, a Cherry Bakewell Imperial Stout. Cherry Bakewells have, yeah, got that kind of, almondy marzipan thing to it. I'm not that big on cherry bagels to be honest, which I know will be a controversial thing to say, but I'm just not. Um, however, that does smell like it could be absolutely divine. So let's get on to it. Cheers. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> that might be the most complex beer I've drank so far on this channel. Wow. 
there's a raft of flavour in there. The first thing that gets you is the mouthfeel. And I was imminently about to come across and say, my first reaction to this was the mouthfeel was incredible. But then there's such an explosion of flavour after that that it kind of lost my mind for a second there. Wow. Just wow. There's so much going on. There's that sweetness. There's some pastry biscuit notes. There's some nuttiness to it almost there's the good deep i mean the dark malt bill in that is absolutely incredible it's got the fruit layer and you know what's weird it's really clean you would expect something with that kind of profile to be a bit i don't know thick and treacly and like the mouthfeel is incredible but it feels clean it feels properly refined which is really one of the standout things right then Top to bottom taste test. Initially, super mild carbonation. Tiny bit, it's almost a bit sweet and sour on the front of the tongue. Bit of bitterness, but also a bit of sweetness, kind of, I was about to say a bit of a duality and then realized that was a, not a, but anyway, that wasn't intentional. <laughs> um, after that, you get slightly sour cherry kick, which is kind of a nod to that bacon tart thing, which really nice though. It's not super sour, it's just a bit of a bit of that tart cherry. It mellows out just before the swallow. And then on the swallow, you do get a big flavour crush, but it's much less jarring than it is on most beers. It feels much more fluid. I'm happy to say the marzipan isn't reigning supreme. It turns into more of an almond nuttiness than a proper marzipan flavour, which I'm a big fan of. And you're left with more of a sweet, fresh cherry fruit vibe at the end along with that almost coffee-esque but not quite dark bill of the malts and it's just oh, that is superb you know what when i bought this beer it wasn't cheap either it was like eight quid a can or something i thought i really don't know if i'm gonna like this i don't like cherry bakewell and i'll be honest and say i've not liked a lot of black iris beers i've tried before i've not had loads but they just most of the stuff they do is super pale, super hoppy, a shed load of citro, just not my bag. And I was worried that they were going to try and force that into an impy stout, and they haven't. This is absolutely phenomenal. Wow, that could be... I don't want to say that's beer of the year, but it's a hell of a contender. That is absolutely outrageous. And there we have it, it is a humongous bottle, 750ml, Colonel Custard's Christmas Ale. I think if you're thinking I've never heard of that before, well I'm not surprised. It's from Black Isle Brewery, it's one of their, I guess, more exclusive, elaborate brews. It is a, I'm going to have to turn the bottle around to describe this because I can never get all the words right in order, a Bourbon Barrel Aged Imperial Scotch Ale. It's so exciting, the dog's going off. It's a Scotch Ale, it's a wee heavy, it's a... That sort of thing. Uh, it's 11%, I believe. Yeah, 11%. And I'll be honest, possibly the most expensive beer I've bought this year. Um, I can't remember exactly what I paid for it when I was at the Black Isle Brewery, but uh, I've just looked and on their website right now. It's about 17 quid. I think that's about right, to be honest. Um, so let's hope it's damn good, which I'm sure it will be. Well, uh, that was an anticlimax because despite having a top, there's actually a cork in there. I need to get a proper bottle opener. Back in a moment. Right then, corkscrew acquired. Um, not used to this with beer, but let's see what happens. This is a terrible angle to be doing this at as well. About there, I think. Is that gonna be good? I think that's okay. Oh, jeez. Really worried about this ruining the beer, but. I guess there's no point in having fancy beer without a bit of pomp and ceremony, eh? Right, and then hopefully... Still not quite. <laughs> Oh, 
Whee! Let's enjoy a wee nifter to start. In the glass then, as you'd expect for a scotch ale, deep, dark, red, one finger off white head on it. Looks pretty clear to be honest, quite a lot of carbonation spiking up there that I can see. It's difficult to look through as much because it is so dark, but I'm just getting a bit through when I shine it directly into the light. It's definitely red though, rather than black. And um, yeah, getting some aromas at a distance, but nothing too strong. So uh, let's find out what it's really all about. On the nose then, heavy caramelization notes, fruity, figgy. Smells a little bit like a mince pie, a little bit like a Christmas pudding, you know, just a just a hint to those kind of rich dried fruit kind of things. The whiskey's definitely coming through, kind of that vanilla bourbon vibe. But it does smell, it smells remarkably fresh. For something that's aged and so strong and all the rest of it, this doesn't give off the kind of expectation that it's going to be a difficult drink, if that makes sense. It feels like it's going to be quite fruity, quite lively, quite a lot of character, not too serious, which to be honest I'm quite grateful for because the last thing I want when spending this much on a beer is actually to go, I'm a bit overwhelmed by that, I can't really enjoy it. So this doesn't have that impression on the nose at least, so let's find out for sure. Let's get into it. Cheers. Merry Christmas. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes. Wow. Oh, that is full of flavour, super silky, rich, and it's not too domineering. It's really got a really pleasant, sweet, caramel, fruity. Well, I mean, everything I said in the aroma is basically true on the flavour. I have no doubt about saying this. That is the best Scotch ale I've ever had. No question. No question whatsoever. Granted, it's Imperial Barrel A stronger, whatever. But I really like the flavours of Scotch Ale, but so often they go so far to make them a bit aggressive, a bit rough, a bit whatever, that actually halfway through I go, I'm not sure I can really enjoy this properly. Whereas that, that is balanced to perfection. Oh, it is, that is sublime. Right. Top to bottom taste test so you can know exactly what on earth I'm talking about. So, initially, lightly carbonated, quite sweet on the front of the tongue. That goes into kind of a bit of a, I guess a taste of lull. Um, it's quite sweet, quite vanilla forward, just subtle, lingering until it gets to the taste buds at the back. At which point you get a bit of a flavour not a crash, it's more of a, a just an uplift. It's, it goes a bit sweeter, a bit stronger on the booze, and there's a bit of a sweet kind of, I want to say caramelized citrus peel. It's that kind of, there's a very specific word for this, and I can't remember what it is, but you kind of get um, candied, yeah, like candied citrus peel or whatever. It's that kind of thing. Really quite refreshing, and then that drops off, and you're left with the proper, Scotch ale, wee heavy, crescendo of flavour, but in this they're all wrapped up and mixed in with this beautiful, sweet vanilla bourbon experience that it's so good. It's all that, it's that traditional red Scotch ale base built on top of with a load of, I'd say like extra boozy dried fruits, your, kind of, your figs, figgy pudding, mince pie, that kind of thing. Um, and then the aftertaste is like, if you've ever had a um, a whiskey cocktail where you've seen them make it and you go, there's a shed load of whiskey in that, not a lot else, that's gonna be quite rough. And you drink it and it's just, it tastes fully of whiskey, but it doesn't have any of that extra bite, any of that extra intensity. That's what this is like at the end. In fact, I think if you'd given me that, spruced up in a glass and said, this is a, Christmas whiskey cocktail, I would not have questioned it. Um, I mean, maybe I would, I don't know. It's still very much a <laughs> Scotch ale, but that aftertaste is absolutely fantastic. I mean, there's just flavor on flavor in this. I think you could sit there all night with this and 
to be fair, at 11% in a 750ml bottle, it's basically wine, so you'd have to sit there all night with it, and you would just constantly pick out new and interesting things. That is absolutely sensational. Oh, I mean, that is such a fantastic beer. It really is. That is... If you're going to spend some cash on a bottle, that is a bottle to do it on. I have to say, that is simply fantastic.